Thank you. I want to thank the chair and ranking minority member for calling this hearing. These are important issues and uh, appreciate the answers that have been given and the discussion that's been had. Um, when you look at the, uh, the backdrop here that we're discussing uh, this program or reform of this program in, uh, it's, it's a backdrop of an economy that is struggling to recover. Um, the U.S. economy isn't exactly going gangbusters. We've uh, limped along at uh, about 2% growth for a number of years now. And to take away a tool like this uh, that can provide and has provided significant investment uh, in the economy here, I think is a wrong approach. And so uh, we, we should mend it and not end it. Um, if we... Uh, if we... Uh, Talk about how you know we, we shouldn't be selling visas to uh, the highest bidder kind of thing. If you look at our immigration programs, uh, a number of our programs have to do with strengthening our economy. And whether it's bringing people here to fill gaps in our high-tech economy that uh, we don't have uh, the, uh, the people here for, or on the lower skill side as well, much of our immigration structure is is geared toward benefiting our economy. And this is just one of those programs. And it has been a very successful one. I should say, in Arizona, we're fortunate to have a number of charter schools that have been funded through the uh, EB-5 program. Um, but uh, as has been mentioned, there are a number of reforms that, that need to be made. Uh, we've recognized this, and uh, we have promoted these reforms, as Senator Schumer mentioned, uh, during the so-called Gang of Eight bill, or S-744. Uh, we included a number of very tough reforms, and uh, I wish that that bill had passed. Uh, but it didn't, so we've moved ahead with other reforms. Uh, we we want to make sure that we have a balance here. I think uh, that that is proper, and I'm glad Senator Schumer's here to instill some New York values that we've heard uh, so much about lately. Uh, but 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 he, but he's right. You can't just say, "All right, here is where the investment uh, can be made or can't be made," and not take into account uh, where individuals are traveling from um, or where they work um, on the, uh, because of these investments and uh, the benefit to the economy generally. Um, but, uh, but I, I just uh, appreciate uh, what you've said already about um, the EB-5 Integrity Act and how you believe that it uh, does provide some tools uh, that will be helpful um, to, uh, to better ensure that we root out any fraud or abuse that is occurring. Now, let me just ask a question with regard to, uh, uh, I think over the last eight years, the number of denials has increased uh, from... 120 to uh, just over 1,000 in the past eight years. But then uh, from 2014 to 2015, the number of denials was down um, from uh, 178 in 2014 to, uh, to just a, a few, 11. So we've seen a dip and fall. Can you give some indication of, of uh, the number of denials that come? Is that a, a function of number of applications or is it increased enforcement action? Um, on the part of immigration and the SEC, what uh, what can we uh, uh, attribute this fluctuation to? I think you can attribute the result of uh, decreased denials due to a couple of things, but but first is probably the policy memorandum that we put out in May, May of 2013. It served, served to provide um, our adjudicators as well as uh, stakeholders uh, a, a very consistent way that we were going to ad we administer the program. It, it, it made a, a number of clarifications, and I think it just served to improve the quality of the applications and the petitions that we receive. I'd also mention that you know, we, we have a number of individuals who can represent um, regional centers and petitioners, and, and they, they do so for a wide variety of clients, and so they're, they're very familiar with the program requirements, and so we see uh, better applications now than we did in, say, 2010. Thank you. Do you have any thoughts on that from the SEC perspective? No, Senator. We don't have any uh, role in that aspect of the program. Right. Well, thank you. Uh, let me just say, Mr. Chairman, I hope that we do, uh, that we are able to mark up legislation. Uh, it, it, it is not a good thing just to simply see the program uh, reauthorized without the reforms that uh, all of us recognize that are needed. 
And so it's a good time this year to, to actually uh, move legislation that will reform the program and put in place the measures that we know need to be put in place. So thank you for having this hearing.